I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 Don't need a bank, no I'm funded Play the game like it's nothing I'm always thankful for something Don't take for granted, stay humble Now waiting, better believe in your mind Cause it's everything You can mold, shape, find almost anything Hey everybody, this is Braxis. In this video, what I want to talk about is how intensely our society is going to impact what is coming in our future. And by what's coming in our future, I mean, you know, the crunch, the collapse, the SHTF event when, well, not, not an event, but a matrix of events where our society is going to be dramatically transformed from what we think is normal into whatever the new normal is going to be like. Uh, you know, that is coming from a, a number of drivers. I'm not going to get into any specific ones because I know that's incredibly divisive here uh, in the prepping community. There are things certain people just don't want to believe can exist. Other things people absolutely believe exist even though there's no uh, evidence for them. But what I want to talk about here isn't you know, this event or that event or this situation or that situation, but the, the general idea of uh, talking about you know, a future where there is an impact with reality and that has a major negative impact on a lot of people's lives. Uh, you know, people here in the prepping community, uh, you know, we've been a niche for a while. There have been a lot of, you know, people, Johnny come lately, that have come to it, you know, after COVID and everything, and people were like, oh, you know, I couldn't wipe my butt, and now I, I really need to prep. Uh, you know, there have been a lot of, uh, new influxes of people in, into prepping, but it's still kind of a niche thing. And in terms of people who are effective preppers, there's almost none of us around uh, out here. And that, that's what I really want to talk about in this video is people who are talking about things that are coming in the future and people who are actually doing things about that. Um, how, does that how does that impact with uh, the, the, you know, the rest of the world? Frequently, one of the things that we as preppers uh, feel like we need to convince people of is that there's even a problem to begin with. You know, we feel like, well, if we can show people that there are issues, you know, this, this issue's coming to a head, that issue's coming to a head, you know, there's a, a developing kind of shortage here or there, if we could uh, instill in people the reality of what's happening, that that would be kind of a wake-up call for them, and they could be like, oh, yeah, you know, if that happened, then I would want to be prepared for that. Uh, and I think that that is incorrect. That, uh, that we assume that people would react in that way. And here, I'll, I'll give you an example, and it's going to be climate change. I'll just give 60% uh, of the people watching this video the opportunity to just hit the stop button and go on to something else. You know, there's plenty of ultimate survival knife videos out there that you'd probably rather uh, see. We're going to talk a little bit about climate change, uh, but the context for this isn't even uh, whether I or you or anyone believes in climate change or not. But what I want to talk about is people who do believe the climate change is happening. That is a fair uh, preponderance of the world. You know, people uh, seem convinced that the climate is changing and, uh, you know, scientists are always talking about these predictions where, you know, if we don't cut uh, carbon emissions by, you know, X date or whatever, uh, you know, it's going to be a catastrophe within like 20 or 30 years. And uh, we as a society keep uh, marching up to these dates and not making any changes. Uh, and people are fairly convinced that this is leading us towards uh, cataclysm. I'm one of them. I feel like uh, the, the change of climate is going to have enormous impacts on uh, you know, transportation and energy and uh, you know, agriculture. Uh, some of them are going to be positive. You'll be able to grow things in places where you weren't able to grow them in before, but I think cumulatively uh, a lot of them are going to be negative and just the fact that there's change Change uh, takes its toll. You know, whenever there's a change, you need to uh, adjust to that, and there's inefficiencies and, and difficulties with change and, and whatnot. Uh, so I'm one of these people that does think that it's a real thing. Now, what am I doing personally uh, in regard to uh, what I see as being an existential threat to our civilization? Well, I've made a lot of changes. I've uh, changed my life around so that I'm not as reliant on uh, you know energy grids and food networks and things of that nature because I feel like those changes are real. I feel like those changes are coming. I mean, we've already seen a lot of that, uh, you know, occurring and my, my preparations have already started paying off for me. Uh, what are other people that are convinced that climate change are real doing it? What is the average person that is convinced that climate change is a real thing? What is that average person doing? What is that average scientist doing? Generally, zilch, nothing. So you've got a group of people that are absolutely dead set convinced that there is an apocalypse on the horizon. 
that's the way people talk about it. I believe that the vast majority of people that talk about climate change believe that it's an actual thing. The, the idea that there's like this consortium or a cabal of uh, you know, scientists lying about all this stuff, I, I, I don't buy it. I, I think usually the simplest explanation is oftentimes the correct one, and I think that people have come to the conclusion that based on the science, these things are happening. I don't think there's a big lying conspiracy about it. I could be wrong about that. I could be right about that. Generally, I tend to be right about things, but who knows? Uh, but what's important isn't whether I believe it, it's not whether you believe it, it's whether those people believe it. And those people, I believe, do believe it. And again, what are they doing? These are people that are convinced there's an apocalypse on the very near horizon, and what are they doing about it? Nothing. So do you think it really matters, you know, if you or I or anyone uh, talks to the average person in the world and is able to convince them, it's like, oh, you know, this thing ha is happening, forget climate change, you know, you know, uh, you know political uh, upheaval or, you know, whatever else it might be. Does it matter if you or I can convince somebody that these dangers are on the horizon? I don't think it does. And the reason is because we see it right in our face with climate change. You have people that will openly scream that they believe this is happening and yet what are they willing to do to change their lives to change their society to to combat what they believe is a real thing nothing they're they're willing to do nothing we saw this during the coronavirus uh situation you know uh, covid came out and uh yeah you know there's, there's another very controversial topic uh you know right from the very beginning i was not really sold on the idea that vaccines were going to be some kind of a panacea my my lay person's knowledge of uh, uh coronaviruses uh informed me that they just mutate too fast for a vaccine to really help people because you, you develop a vaccine and then you know the thing would have mutated into something else uh as a lay person that seemed pretty obvious to me uh and yet none of the professional community seemed to pick up on that and it clearly turned out to be what uh, you know ended up happening. Like I said, I'm usually right about things. Uh, not all the time, but usually. Um, as soon as the vaccines became obvious that they weren't really working and many people weren't really interested in getting the vaccines, what was, corona, uh, what was the, the pandemic uh, described as? It was the pandemic of the unvaccinated. I'm unvaccinated. I never got COVID, never got any other, uh, you know, colds or flus or anything like that during the whole period. My sense was I'm going to change my lifestyle. I'm, you know, if I see people that are sick, I'm not going to hang around people that are sick. If people are blowing their nose in the air, I'm not going to inhale that into my lungs. I mostly did lifestyle changes and it's been 100% effective. Other people wanted to believe, they wanted to have faith that science would come and save them and they would not have to change their lifestyles. To me, the coronavirus uh, pandemic was a pandemic of people who were addicted to their lives the way that their lives were. They didn't like change, they couldn't uh, stand change, and uh, they weren't going to let the idea of a pandemic allow them to, or force them, to change their lives in any way. I changed my life, and it was 100% effective. All the people, I, I don't want to throw people into big monoliths, not everyone that was vaccinated was one of these people that was criticizing people like myself that was not vaccinated that is a stereotype and I don't want to perpetuate that because it's it's not true uh, you know there were there were people that were vaccinated that were uh, you know really nasty and negative to people like myself uh, and then there were people that were vaccinated they were like it should be a choice it was my choice to get vaccinated it's your choice not to and you know they were cool with that so it, they were not a monolith and it wasn't that everyone that was vaccinated was you know under mind control and was all uh, you know uh, drinking the same kool-aid and everything uh, but quite a few of the people that, you know, described it as a pandemic of the unvaccinated were very happy to get their vaccine, go out, catch COVID, spread it around to all sorts of people. Many of those people were elderly people that ended up dying from it. Uh, to me, it was a pandemic of the people that did not, were not willing to change their lifestyles. And this collapse, this event that I see coming in our future, whether it is caused by climate or this, or that, or the other thing, geopolitical stresses, I think is going to be the same thing. It is going to be a cataclysm of people who are not willing to change their lives. They are waiting for a technological, magical wand to come through so that they could not take any responsibility for the situation, not take any responsibility for the solution. They could preach and they could complain, but they didn't want to actually make any changes in their lives, even when they 100% believe that this thing is happening. Like climate change, people that believe that it's happening, but they don't want to change their lives, just like they didn't want to change their lives with COVID. So going forward, what does that mean for us? Well, what it means for us is I think that 
we can spend less time trying to convince people that uh, changes are coming because even the changes that people believe are coming, they're not preparing for. People don't really want to prepare for things if it involves any kind of a change in lifestyle on their part. So how does that influ influence my plans and your plans? Well, plan for a lot of people being unprepared because even if they believe that these things are happening, they don't want to prepare for them. I don't know why. I, it's like almost like a suicide gene in humanity. I don't think of... It's, just, it's surprising to me that humans can have that within them and that we've survived as long as we've been able to here on this planet. How, how, can, you have a, how can you have a group of individuals that actively believes that something is going to kill them potentially and they, they don't want to do anything about it? I don't know how that's the case. I don't know how we are still existing. You know, how did we evolve? And, and that, was the, that was the case. I don't know the answer to that question. But I do know that what I see around me suggests that, that is the case. So don't worry too much about trying to convince people of this, that, and the other thing. I'm still going to keep my channel out here. I'm always going to talk about these things. And, you know, th yeah, there are some people that jump, uh, jump on board. And I know there are people who, who have been helped by this. But I, think, I don't think that we can stress about trying to convince everyone. Because even if we can convince them all that these things are coming, they probably aren't going to want to do a damn thing about it. That's it. <laughs> have a nice day. And thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.